Hi guys and welcome back to the channel with me, Beth Grill. And I know it has been such a while since I last did a video. I apologise for that, I've just been really busy lately. But now I'm back here now, I'm ready to get on with it. So today I'm really excited about what we're doing. In my art, I love to use natural resources. I love to reuse the remnants of my last creative processes. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the ash from the fire pit and we are going to be transforming that into a paint-like consistency. I've got a bit of flour, a bit of water, um, some ideas in my head and we're going to be making that into a paint to hopefully make some really lovely depictions of the moon and the night sky because at the moment I'm finding that so inspirational. So let's get on with it and just see how it goes. Okay, so my inspiration obviously is going to be the night sky. Um, I've got some images on my phone that I took of the moon uh, not long ago at all, so I'm just going to get those up just for a bit of inspiration. So that's going to be my inspiration and I'm going to pop it there. So first of all, uh, black paper, because I'm thinking night sky, I want the background to be quite dark black so we can make the impression of stars and really get that brightness of the moon. So we've got some black paper. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm thinking I want this to be a sort of wall decor, um, maybe like a sequential thing of the moon phases. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut this piece of paper into four equal quarters and then we'll go from there. Okay, there we go. So we now have our four pieces of black card ready to get some moons on them and really start jazzing them up like the beautiful night sky. Oh, and the sun's just come out as I said that, so that is fantastic. Right, so next thing I'm gonna do is make a template for my moon. So I'm just gonna use a plain piece of white paper for this. So how many do I need? I need four again, so fold it into quarters. Right, okay, so from there now, what I'm going to do is draw out my moon shape. Right, so I'm just going to draw a rough circle in here with my compass. There we go. So, obviously, the main moon phases we're thinking about, we've got the full moon, the gibbous, the quarter moon, the crescent, and of course the young moon. So, I think that's five... So what I might do is just go for the more interesting stages, so perhaps miss out the new moon, the full moon, and just go for the ones in between. So what I'm going to do then is dissect up my moon. It's quite mathematical for a bit of art. Find half of the radius, move my compass to meet the corner, and swing that around in one big arc. Okay, there we go. So we have the main crescent arc there. So what I'm going to do then is cut that out as my template. Okay, so now I've got my crescent moon. Next bit is to make the other moon phases. and find all my bits. Result, not a single one landed in the fire. So there we go, that's our gibbous there, our gibbous there. Oh my gosh, it started to rain. Right, okay, it started to rain guys, so I'm gonna have to put everything away and perhaps find a space inside. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's not just raining, that is raining a lot. Okay, so the next steps. Um, in terms of the paint, what I'm going to be doing is using this. This is a um, this is a ramekin full of ash that I just literally got out of my fire. That is going to be the sort of pigment to our paint, if you like. And as you can see, I've chosen the whitest bits I can get my hands on because I really want that to be a nice, um, bright sort of contrasting colour to the black. So what I'm going to do is I'm making a sort of paper mache style paint. Um, so I think for that you do about a tablespoon of flour. I'm not entirely sure. Let's just try a tablespoon of flour and then we'll try maybe two tablespoons of water. 
one, two. To make like a thick but runny consistency. So it's just making a sort of paste um, with the flour and the water. And then I'm just gonna put a big sprinkling of ash into that. I don't, because it's quite a pale color, I'm assuming you'd want a lot of ash. I'm not entirely sure. But I'm just gonna mix that in. And we'll see what color it goes. I could go quite dark gray as it's looking here. But that's still gonna be a lovely, vibrant contrast to the black of the card. So that's gonna be really lovely. I'm going to try and keep my card as neat and as clean as possible so that the moon really stands out in the most vibrant contrast I can achieve. So, put that down. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do then is put down my stencil. So, let's start with a lovely gibbous moon. Just because that's the biggest one, I'm feeling like going big or go home. So, I'm just going to use the sponge and blob it in. I love the way this has given it a sort of texture uh, like you see on the moon because obviously the moon is full of texture and craters and things and that's really mimicked that in there so I'm really happy with that actually I don't know how it will dry it's not that clean around the edge so what I'm just going to do is go around uh, with my knife and just clean that edge up a little I could get another bit of sponge and sort of make a powdered finish on it like that. So get that absolutely coated and dry and just dab it on to the wet. And hopefully, look, that's, oh, that's wonderful. It's actually taken up um, all the lumps and the bumps and created in the liquid underneath it. That is fab. So it's pretty good keeping in that colour scheme of the really earthy tones and the natural sort of textures and things. And then once again, just clean up those areas where I didn't really want moon juice. Okay, so as you can see there, that is our four moon phases. Without the full moon, we've got the young moon, the crescent moon, the quarter moon, and the gibbous moon. I think they absolutely look stunning. I love the impact of the texture we've got um, through the lumpiness of the flour in the liquid with the powdery ash and earthy look we've got on the top that really contrasts with the black and I think it, it works so well. So the next bit obviously is to put some stars onto these really lovely moon compositions. So I've got a few ideas. I'm thinking we could use some white spray paint to do a sort of speckled effect. Um, maybe using the template to mask off the moon. Remembering that there is a dark side to the moon, so we're going to need a full circle. So I have to cut out a full moon and stencil that off. It says glitter as well, which I could sum I don't know how I could um, stick that on in a speckled formation, uh, other than splattering glue at it or something along those lines. Okay, so I've just cut out a full moon template there, um, just because that will cover the full surface of every single phase of the moon. Because if I'm going to be spray painting it or spraying stars onto it, we need to keep that dark side of the moon also really clean. But let's just get on, let's experiment and let's just see how it goes. So I've got a range of materials here, I've got some white spray paint, I've got some PVA glue. Um, I've got some glitter and I've also got some of my paste left from earlier which I could use as sort of a glue solution. So I'm going to put in here my mixture of colours I want for the stars uh, in terms of glitter. So primarily I'm going to go for white. Uh, white isn't a very usual glitter colour to use but in this case it is the most uh, relevant because it's going to create a brilliant contrast between the black in the background. So I'm also going to use a silver and I'm going to stick to sort of cool lighter colours rather than gold or red which you do see in stars I'm going to stick primarily to blues and whites and silvers because they're going to stand out the most from the black behind. I will however put a sprinkling of red in because you do get red stars. That will do. I'm just going to try and wipe that up as I go along. Get my brush with some glue on it, some watery glue, 
and flick, flick, flick. So looking at that now, it is perhaps a bit too glittery. I'm gonna scrape bits off it. And that one is looking much better. I actually have aligned that really wrong though. So there is a huge gap by the moon. Maybe we could just put a bit of that back into it. Okay, so that is it. We now have our four moon phases. And if I just tilt the camera down, I can show you those. So we've got our young moon, our crescent moon, our quarter moon and our gibbous moon. And as you can see, as a set, they really do work well and they really do fade into each other really nicely. There are a few areas that could be developed, obviously, where there's slightly too many stars, where I went heavy handed with the glitter, or where the full moon didn't quite line up with the moon we'd drawn inside it. But as a whole set together, they take away some of those anomalies and they make themselves look great together as a flowing piece. So I think what I'm going to be doing with these is putting them on my bedroom wall because I'm absolutely so pleased with them and I love the night sky and I'd love to just see them every night and just be reminded of how beautiful and elegant that night sky is. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I've really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really lovely, simple project. It was just nice to use up the natural materials around us. We've used everything from ash to glitter, to paper, and a lot of it has been reduced, reused and recycled. Um, we had the ash from the fire pit, um, from the kiln, that's just left over. We had the scraps of black paper, the scraps of white paper, and the flour in the water which was just lying around in the cupboards. You know, so none of this has been bought purposely to make it. And that is really where I think the beauty lies, is that we have made something so beautiful from something so simple. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and thank you for joining me today. I really do hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and do not hesitate to leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time in another video.